in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the Kajabi settings that a lot of people will skip over. They'll just launch right into doing all the fun stuff, building their website and landing pages and products, which is great. You do need to take action. But there are a few settings that you don't wanna skip over because it's gonna take your Kajabi presence to a new level. Now, before we get started, I want to give you some bonuses so that if you are ready to get started with Kajabi and you wanna play around with it, test your own settings that I'm about to show you, and just give yourself some time to really build it out and start making money with it, I wanna give you a 30-day free trial of Kajabi. It allows you to get an extended free trial so you can utilize the whole platform before paying a penny and decide if it's the right platform for you. When you sign up with my link below, brookroberts.co slash Kajabi, you're also going to get bonuses. First of all, a 45-minute coaching call with me where I'm gonna walk you through Kajabi. We'll talk about your business, your aspirations, and how how I think you need to be leveraging the different functionality and tools within Kajabi for your business. You'll also get access to my Kajabi Kickstart Guide, which is a PDF playbook on the steps I would take in order to get up and running on Kajabi fast and start making money in the next 30 days so that you can basically pay for Kajabi before you actually have to pay for Kajabi. The next bonus you're gonna get is my 25K course launch email sequence. These are the emails that I have used for the past eight years to launch my signature program at Inside Study Abroad. These emails in my very first launch made me over $25,000 in less than a week. And I have continued to use a version of this email sequence every single time I've launched that program over the years. And it's made me well over multiple six figures. So I'm gonna give you access to that email sequence for free so you can learn from it, mirror it, and use it to launch your own product in the future. So if you want access to that, make sure you sign up with my link. Thank you so much for supporting me, my business, my channel by using my link, brookroberts.co slash Kajabi. Let's dive into our settings. This is the Kajabi backend. The way you get here is once you've logged in, you'll scroll over here to the left and you'll click on settings, which will take you to this page. And you'll see you have your site settings as well as your account settings. I'm not gonna go through these, but generally speaking, you'd wanna walk through these things just to make sure everything's set up. They have your address and billing information so you can walk through those on your own. But we're gonna focus on your site settings up here at the top. We'll start with your site details. You're going to have the title of your site and then you're gonna see that you have your subdomain. Now this is the domain that Kajabi gives to you, the My Kajabi version. There's your support email, your phone number, and then you can select your language and the direction of your text as well. This is what also where you can select your currency. The next section is your home homepage. Now this is where you get to decide when you have your domain set up, where does that homepage live? Is it the homepage of the template that you're using? You could also just choose your storefront. So if you're not using Kajabi for your entire website, you might consider using the storefront or you could build out a completely separate landing page and choose that page as your homepage. If I click on landing page, it'll give me a drop down list of all of the different landing pages I've created. Your branding, this is where you make sure that you have a logo and your favicon. So the favicon is this little icon up here in the tab area. Chrome, you'll see this little blue Kajabi K, that's their favicon. If I go to Inside Study Abroad, you'll see that my favicon is this little globe with the airplane. And so you wanna go ahead and make sure that you make your own. They give you the sizing here. You can just go into Canva, create your own. So it's automatically uploaded to all of your web site pages. It should also appear on all your landing pages, but technically on your landing pages, you can choose a different favicon on those as well. If you want to have a different favicon for your sales page for a specific product, you could do that. But otherwise, you want to change this here so when people come to your website, they don't see the Kajabi K because that's the default. They'll see your own. Same thing with your logo. This is the logo that will show at the top of your marketing emails and other places around your websites. Whatever logo you want to be the most visible, that's where you'd load it. Here you get to select your brand colors. I've gone in here and I've selected an 
and put in those exact hex codes. Click on this, enter the hex code that you want. What this does on your color palette is when you're building out your website and your landing pages later, this color palette will appear in your selector tool. You don't have to worry about memorizing all your hex codes. You can just select the teal that you want to show in that specific space and it's already there preloaded for you. Of course, if you are the main brand and person behind your business, you'd want to have a headshot of yourself, your name, your title, etc. This is where you would enter some header scripts. And the next area is your SEO. This is where you are putting in a page title for your website and a description that is indicative of what you do and also going to help the search engines understand what your site is about. You can also choose a social image if you don't want whatever default image that the social platform will pull. So if you post on Facebook or LinkedIn, it'll automatically pull an image if you want to control what that image is when people share your website you could upload that image right here lastly you can decide whether or not you want to show your kajabi branding this is only available to turn this off if you have the growth plan or higher but if you do have that plan you can decide to turn it off or turn it on since i love kajabi and i want everyone to know that's the platform i use i leave it on hit save just in case I made any changes. So let's go back to our settings. Those are all your general settings. And now we can go into marketing. Marketing is what's going to show at the footer of your emails and just make sure that you are in compliance with any anti-spam laws. You wanna put the name of your company, your address that you want to be appearing at the footer of your emails. You can also choose your company logo if you want a different logo to show in your emails. Down here is where you're gonna select your Kajabi email settings. So this gets a little more technical. Kajabi allows you to send from their domain or you can actually set up your own email domain. And this again is much more advanced and I think it's the kind of thing you want to think about once you're well established in your business. You, I would definitely recommend going to their help article to explain why you might want to use the Kajabi domain versus your own domain to send emails. You'll put your from name and of course you want to select an email that the email is sending from and where they would reply to. Email sequence defaults. This is where you're going to decide what time of day and what time zone your emails will get sent when you send them in an email sequence. So these automated emails that go out in a series. I've selected 8 a.m. Central Time because that's my personal time zone here in the United States. It really depends on you and where you think your audience is going to get the most bang for the buck in terms of when you're sending them emails. Let's go back and we'll go to checkout settings. This is the area where you are running certain settings related to when people buy a product from you. So the checkout or cart process. The first thing you have to decide is how people opt in to your email list. You can have an unchecked opt-in box, which is recommended because you want people to actively opt into your email list, or you could have a pre-checked opt-in box and it gives you a little warning that, hey, you might be in violation of some email GDPR type of laws somewhere in the world. So keep that in mind. You can have it disabled completely so they're not asked to join your email list. And then of course you can also do a custom message. You wanna be very careful with this depending on where you live. There are laws around people having the option to opt in actively to an email list. You can't just sign people up without their consent. Make sure that you're understanding the laws that apply to you where you are. You can ask people to opt in to storing their cards. It allows your platform to store their credit card, which is totally encrypted, in your Stripe or PayPal settings so that automatically next time they're logged in and they try to buy something, the credit card is saved. You can opt them out by default and they can choose whether or not to store it. You can opt them in by default where the checkbox is already selected or you can disable it altogether. And then the next area is checkout setting if you're running ads or other systems that might require some tracking to know that the ad converted to a customer this is where you would add that tracking code next up we have our blog setting you definitely want to make sure you don't ignore these settings because these are related to your seo your search engine optimization make sure that the blog is very clear on who it's for what it does has some keywords in there so the other thing i could do here is also add a social sharing image as well so anytime somebody shares my blog page this image would come up 
Next up, we have our drip settings. This is pretty simple, but when you are releasing content on a drip basis, which means when you release content in one of your programs or your courses, and maybe you're releasing something on every Monday, you can select the automatic time that's sent to your customers. So I have it set up as 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, send an email to customers when product modules are dripped. And they'll automatically send an email saying, hey, you have new content or you have a new module ready for you inside of Inside Study Abroad, come check it out. And it'll prompt them to log in and go review that information. Back to our settings. Now we want to look at customer payments. What we want to do here is make sure that we are sending receipts to our customers. This is actually a new setting from Kajabi and I actually haven't had a chance to update it. So I'm going to send receipts to all of my customers. You can add messages about what your product is for, refund policies, etc. Of course, you can preview it here, what it's going to look like. If you have a membership or a subscription based product where people are paying every single month or every quarter, or every year, you can decide whether or not they have to actively email you to cancel their membership or if they can log into their settings and cancel themselves. Next section we have is our payment integrations. This is actually how you're going to connect your Kajabi account to your payment processors. So in the world of online business, you have your site hosting and your checkout page, but you also have to have a payment processor. And these are the companies that work with the banks and the credit card companies to make sure that the transaction can actually go through on the internet. And the two big players in this world that Kajabi works with are Stripe and PayPal. It would say connect your Stripe if you weren't already connected and you go through the process of connecting them. So it will require you to set up both a Stripe and PayPal accounts. Those are both free, but but once you have your payment processor set up, when someone buys something from you, these two processors will charge a small percentage of each transaction plus a small fee. And I think it's like 2.9% plus 45 cents or something like that. Third party integration. So while I do believe that you can use Kajabi all in one and you don't need any other tools, perhaps you really love the features of one of these other email integrations and you don't want to move this over, at least not yet. You could connect your active campaign directly here or your ConvertKit or Drip or MailChimp. If you select one of these, it would ask you for your API URL, your API key. This is information you would grab from active campaign to insert here. You could set up Google Analytics and add your pixel ID here. And then if you want to connect Zapier, next up we have our email templates. In this section, you can edit any of the automated transactional emails that happen inside of Kajabi. Whether you're sending announcements to affiliates or you want students to be sent an email about their assessments, there's just a lot of different emails in here and you can Spend some time going through them, see if there's any that you want to edit slightly. Next up, we have our domains. This is where you get to decide if you want to use Kajabi on your domain that you own. For instance, I use InsideStudyAbroad.com for this brand. I use BrookRoberts.co for my personal brand. You need to go buy a domain from a domain processor. This is where you're going to change from using your MyKajabi.com domain to your own domain. I have it set up to use my custom domain. If you didn't, it would walk you through the steps to do that. Next up, we have our form settings. As a refresher, your forms are the element on your site where you collect name and email from people. And if you want to have more security around your forms, you can add a reCAPTCHA for single opt-in forms to make sure that people are real humans and you're not getting any bots or spammy bad actors opting into your forms. Form fields, this is where you can add, look at all the form fields that Kajabi has as a standard. And then of course you can add your own. And then static pages. Now, Kajabi does this weird thing, and I'm not gonna lie, it's really weird. And they have these additional pages that utilize this weird URL. So you see where it says pages slash privacy policy, or it could be pages slash terms, or could it be pages slash something else? And you can create these on your own. They're plain text. You can't add a bunch of images and drag and drop features like you can with the website builder and the landing page builder. These are just default system pages that exist. I just hate that they have this pages thing in here. I think it's super weird. But if you needed to ever go update your privacy policy, your terms and conditions, you wanted to have 
an affiliate link policy or something, this is where you would create one of those static policy pages. Next up, we have our mobile app settings. Now, this is one of those things that a lot of people never update, and it just drives me nuts. When you download the Kajabi app and then you log in with your email or any email you've ever used to purchase other people's products or services on Kajabi, it'll show you every single thing you've ever purchased inside of the app. Inside, there is an icon you can insert for your business. And a lot of people don't do it. They're missing a really great branding opportunity. You wanna use an updated icon for your business you can choose some app colors that most directly align with your brand. The other thing that you can do in here is prompt your customers and your students to actually go in and download the app. Last one that I think is really fun that you should pay attention to as a Kajabi user is the labs setting. Every now and then Kajabi is launching a new setting, a new tool, an update on a current function of the site. So they allow certain users to try out this new version or this updated thing or this new thing that we've launched. And you can come in here and toggle it on or off. By default, they're always turned off. When you turn it on, it'll say activated. So now when I go in to edit a website or a landing page, I'm gonna have a different upgraded experience that they're still just testing at Kajabi. Those are all of the Kajabi settings. I would make it a quarterly practice to go through all of the settings to make sure that Kajabi hasn't updated anything and that you don't want to change anything that hasn't been working for you. If you want to get started with Kajabi, if you're just getting started and ready to dive in and you want three days to try it out and tinker with Kajabi, get your settings all right, I encourage you to use my link down below, brookroberts.co slash Kajabi. Now it is an affiliate link, but I only recommend products that I use every single day that I love and would recommend to my mom if she asked me. <laughs> when you use my link, you are going to get a 45 minute coaching call with me where we can talk about your Kajabi setup, your business and how it can work on Kajabi. I love doing these calls. I would love to meet you and chat with you. The other thing you're gonna get is my Kajabi Kickstart Guide. This is a PDF playbook that shows you step by step on what I think you need to do in the next 30 days to get up and running and making money on Kajabi fast. And you'll also get access to my 25K course launch email sequence. On my very first launch, I made $25,000 in a very tiny niche with a very small audience. I want to show you the exact email sequence that I use and I continued to use for the next seven years and it continued to work over and over to build my business to a multiple six figure a year business. So if you want to get access to all of those things, go to brookroberts.co slash Kajabi. I would love to meet you on a coaching call very soon. And of course, you're going to get that 30 day free trial. Kajabi only offers a 14 day free trial when you sign up directly through them, but I am giving you 30 days. It is plenty of time for you to get in there, tinker around, get set up and start making money online. I will see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.